Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, in my continuing series on the Process Church, um, I want to talk about Timothy Wiley, which um, there's a movie based on his book, Love, Sex, Fear, Death, the Inside Story of the Process Church of the Final Judgment. And, you know, I'm doing these things because there's a lot of mis- and disinformation out there that is spread about this whole thing. And quite frankly, there's nothing but a bunch of stooge researchers which seem to be involved in everything. And then they put in their worthless interpretation of something, whether it's the shooting on the movie set of Rust that involved Alex Baldwin, and particularly when it gets into The Son of Sam or any investigations into satanic cults, because no Nobody knows anything about them. After all, there's secret organizations and there's really a bunch of finger pointing when nobody has ever been charged with much of anything. And people who do then murder people and say they are in a satanic cult like David Berkowitz, well, does he have any credibility? I don't think so. He has an entire life of being as crazy as a box of frogs. So the whole idea is that... There's really nobody out there except myself that has any kind of knowledge and has studied uh, satanic cults for over 40 years now. I've been following them. I'm in kind of the industry, being an occult scientist. I know the, quote, magical world. But they're actually reverse Christians. They are not really in or have ever really been accepted in occultism and uh, everything that goes with that. Now, there's a lot of very interesting information here. In the Process Church, uh, per uh, the new movie um, that was uh, recently came out, um, the which has a lot of past members in it, they stated nobody in the church had any, quote, magical background. Well, they really weren't involved in magic. They were playing the robed medieval um, mystery people, and they were basically preaching a uh, Gnostic, a bizarre, I'm not sure if it's bizarre, um, there were preaching a Gnostic understanding of Satan and Lucifer that we have to understand that these are part of us. And as that, we have to make peace with them. We have to love them. Now, when you say this, which would be standard Christmas uh, Christian philosophy, love your enemy, isn't that what you say? Turn your buttocks so you can get jammed a good one. Well, isn't that what Christianity is all about? So, uh, their message was really not that strange. And when I've looked through it all, um, while they did say some weird things, and uh, I've, I've heard, and I can't locate it, um, that they preached a certain amount of violence, but it doesn't really come to that. Now, I don't want to go into the history of the process church here. I want to talk about the uh, one of the major leaders, and that was Timothy Wiley. Now, Timothy Wiley, you could say, is about the third in command of the church, so to speak. <clears throat> he was very active in the uh, church and it's many different changes. You got to remember it went from this process church of the final judgment, a name that I just heard the final judgment aspect was added on by their attorney when they follow, filed for a nonprofit status. They didn't pick that themselves apparently. A little interesting tidbit. Now, I am going to read his book. I have it on Kindle. I haven't had a chance to start it. Love, Sex, Fear, Death, the Inside Story of the Process Church Final Judgment. It's 305 pages, apparently. And I've been looking at everything that um, Timothy Wiley has done in terms of interviews. And it's amazing how all these people can be interviewed very easily. Of course, it's hard to interview him now because he died in... Um, uh, 20, um, was it 2019? Let me check that out. 2017. 2017, he died. He was born in 1940, making him 67 when he died. Um, or what is that? Did I, am I, I'm terrible at math there. What is that? I'm sorry, 77 when he died. So he died at 77, which is not too shabby in general. Um, he made it to the average age. Uh, the average life expectancy is anywhere from about 60, uh, 68 uh, uh, on up, basically. Most people that have good medical care lived about in their middle 80s. Um, 
but he was available. I've seen different interviews from uh, people that are not really qualified to talk to him, but he granted interviews living in Mountain Air, New Mexico. I think one was to Vice TV, which seems to be full of interviews with wrestlers. How bizarre. But this guy went there playing a goofy game um, of uh, talking to him, acting like he was uh, Louis Thoreau and uh, talking to him like it was uh, he was a complete, total, non-credible person. Now, he ran the coffee shop. Uh, he was a, uh, a degreed architect, as was... Um, Robert Moore, otherwise known as Robert de Grimston. Uh, he was also an architect. Now, I don't know if he graduated school or not, but Timothy Wiley did. He was a graphic artist. He did the magazine for the actual church, which really generated most of their money, I guess. They also made a lot of money in the Scientology fashion because that's what the organization was kind of structured on, the same thing. They taught a lot of people all sorts of different um, psychological skills. They taught people um, psychic skills, uh, how, to, how to do um, did, uh, psychic training courses, telekinesis, etc. So they were teaching people all of these things and, of course, charging money for it. And that's where they made their money from. <clears throat> and the one strange thing about this church is they seem to have oodles of money at certain times. Now, they almost starved to death when they left England and went out to the, I believe, somewhere in the uh, Caribbean. <clears throat> they went to Mexico and almost killed by a storm. So they had a lot of problems, and then they moved around, and um, they didn't seem to have much money there and probably were very unable to generate any money. They tried living out in the wilderness and trying to survive with, I uh, guess, the money they had from their original uh, time in England. And they went back to England, apparently. And I don't know if this is all 100%. I'm not sure what thing is. It's not important, but um, he was involved in all of these things, and he gives his stories of it. And there's a good interview with him, um, which I'll list in the uh, below here, which you can hear his side of the story. It's about 25 minutes, and he tells you uh, about his experiences with the church. So I'm not sure what to make of it um, to him or anything else. Now, he is a very noted writer, and he has his own little bizarre uh, belief system where apparently uh, he equates, which is typical of this kind of strange, um, bizarre Gnostic belief system where the... Um, uh, the actual serpent in the Garden of Eden was this extraterrestrial entity that uh, was helping mankind. And this is what he's based books on. He's, his most famous book is um, <clears throat> Dolphins, ETs, and Angels, How to Communicate with Them. This is his big book, uh, which w came out in 1984. And um, uh, I'm assuming that did well. He's published by... Um, Inner Traditions, a well-known um, <clears throat> New Age alternative publisher who publishes all sorts of things now, including uh, other, or I should say real Satanists, uh, that they, Nazi Satanists uh, that they publish uh, now, uh, Idrid uh, Flowers, otherwise known as Idrid Thorson, his books are published through them, and he's a noted, self-admitted uh, Satanist and a Nazi, and he admits it. <clears throat> so, um, he's also highly um, connected to using hallucinogens, and uh, this is how he gets most of his information. So, um, he takes hallucinogens, um, even a mention of a PCP, uh, which is certainly a strange drug. But I think he's taken all, he stated he's taken all of the other hallucinogens. And this is how he kind of uh, is able to change his reality into more of a shamanic understanding. He's able to communicate with dolphins, angels, and extraterrestrials. <clears throat> So this is what he's written about. He has many, many books on this subject. And let me list a few of these here. Now I'll get back to you what he says in his book on the Process Church, uh, which is accused of everything. They're the dump all. They were popular. Uh, everybody points to them to uh, take the pressure off of other groups is what I believe. The bottom line is that... Um, 
uh, they have never, nobody within that church, certainly none of their leadership has been convicted of anything. And it's all a bunch of gossip. And this all comes from Maury Terry, the writer of Ultimate Evil, who's accused them of all these things, from what I can see, very unjustifiable. There's no evidence to track them. There are people that say that, like David Berkowitz, uh, saying that they're the ones. And who was known in the uh, satanic world at that time? Really, they're not Satanists, again. They are not doing any practices that involve uh, Satan per se. It's this mixed bag of things that people don't understand the higher and lower self but they were very dramatic wearing robes and pins and all these other things and they wanted to get attention and they did and Wiley was one of the main people involved in this so he was a graphic designer he put out the magazine which I'm assuming was one of their major funding sources they used to go out and beg a lot this is what um, some of the children in the order talked about they go out to airports and other things in the later times and beg for money particularly for animal causes because that's what they found people would give a lot of money to now whether that actually went to help animals or not particularly pre animal sanctuary time that the church eventually got involved in uh, and that's hard to say because it, it, it's not as clean as that they transitioned from several organizations finally into an animal welfare organization <clears throat> So, but they did go out uh, per one of their, um, uh, one of the children who has written a book, Garrett, Jared Garrett has written a book and uh, stating what it was like to be a child in that particular organization or one of its splinter organizations. <clears throat> So they would go out and beg for money, and of course, getting money for animals is a lot easier than getting money for a church nobody knows about, and um, just asking for money in general. So that's always a great way. People are always willing to give to animal causes, not to help mankind, but they'll help animals. So this is well known, particularly a lot of rich people who give huge amounts of money to help animals. So, uh, but that's another issue here. So Wiley, of course, he has these books, The Return of the Rebel Angels, Urantra Mysteries and the Coming of the Light. Now, I don't know what he's involved in Urantra or not, um, how that fits in, but there, it's the rebel angel again, because he sees it as this <clears throat> Luciferian, the rebel angels among us. And he believes he's a rebel angel. He believes that he is a extraterrestrial uh, that has come down to this plane to help it evolve. And it kind of fits in with everything else. And he's interweaving this to try and uh, make his image a little better, which is ask your angels, a practical guide to working with messengers of heaven to empower and enrich your life. And I'm going to slowly read through a lot of these books as I have time. Confessions of a Rebel Angel, Revelations of the Watchers, The Unfolding Destiny of the Rebel Angels. Now, this is what he's into. Rebel Angels in Exile, Palladians, Watchers, and Spiritual Waking of Humanity. So it's all this rebel angel. And he equates this rebel angel with the serpent in the Garden of uh, Eden uh, who tried to educate and bring the dummies, um, Adam and Eve, to a higher level. <clears throat> That's how he interprets it. And of course, this is the problem with that... Um, this, um, you know, Jesus, Jehovah, Lucifer, Satan thing of combining everything together, because what it does is it, it's not a fact, of, it gives more credit to, or tends to give credit to Satan and Lucifer and uh, move the emphasis away from uh, Jesus and Yahweh or Jehovah. Uh, and this is where everybody gets upset and confused. But, you know, it's the higher and lower self. If you are able to stop them from battling and them working together for a better goal, well, that makes a lot of sense. So when you put it that way, it doesn't sound as bad. But Revolt of the Rebel Angels, the secret, I think I said that already, Wisdom of the Watchers, Teaching of the Rebel Angels on Earth's Forgotten Past, Awakening the Watchers, Secret Mission of Rebel Angels in the Forbidden Quadrant. So these are all the, um, uh, these are all the uh, books that he has written. And it has this theme that goes through all of them of this rebel angel, this um, uh, lower self angel that helps mankind. Uh, very much of a Luciferian type figure. Lucifer, while generally is not the greatest guy, he's... Um, uh, 
thought to be helpful with mankind, enlightening them. That's what uh, the babble is. We even have a TV show uh, making Lucifer look like a nice guy. Because generally the Lucifer show on TV, uh, which has been on for many years, <clears throat> I think it was on for five or six years, uh, shows Lucifer kind of as this nice guy. So, and helping mankind indirectly as well. It's kind of a um, grayish character. And that, that's exactly what he's saying here. And I'll know better when I read his books, and I will uh, do that. Of course, he first came out with the Dolphins, ETs, and Angels to kind of push him out there and get into a New Age area um, uh, that um, would give him um, a greater... Um, uh, kind of a middle of the road attitude. So, um, uh, so you, there there are these books with, uh, and of course everybody loves extraterrestrials, angels, and dolphins. So it's a sneaky way to get in there uh, to do all that. So we're really gonna have to see what he says. But you know, the bottom line is is that here's a guy that is uh, does all this communication through a drugged state, and uh, he takes a lot of hallucinogens. I can tell you right now, you can see that the way. Now, he's relatively coherent and able to talk about things. Um, he's a little bit over the top in many ways. I'm not sure what his life is about in personal life. Um, this little interview with him. There's several interviews. It's amazing how everybody is so um, after the uh, process church, but nobody really, has, I should say very few people have interviewed him in a serious manner. Now, I don't know if anybody's tried or not. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that people uh, in the past, and of course he was alive uh, to, uh, pretty uh, recently. Maury Terry didn't contact him. Um, they don't seem to contact anybody from the Process Church. Uh, Mary Ann uh, recently died, um, kind of. I'm trying to find that out. It says I thought this just happened recently, and the, again, there's a, uh, a shroud of mystery here. Uh, there's a date of possibly 205 when she died. Well, how can that be? That's almost 20 years ago. I heard that recently happened. Um, but if you go by her birth date, again, she's pushing that 80 years old uh, and so forth. So. Uh, it appears that uh, Robert Moore, otherwise known as uh, Robert de Grimston, is still alive, and he's 86 years old, yet there's no interviews with him at all, and this new movie doesn't have him in it as far as I understand, and I don't think it had Mary Ann in it either. I don't know if she was dead already or not, so we just don't know. Um, she, uh, she married Dupre and um, started the animal sanctuary after she got divorced from de Grimston, so, which was in 84, I believe. But we're getting into other people here. But he's an interesting guy. He's been very public. He's been out there writing all these books. He has his own little way, which shows, you know, the process church attitude of this higher and lower self honoring the nature of Satan and Lucifer, and I think a little bit too much. Uh, and of course, this is what tends to turn people off. But, you know, that's their Gnostic understanding. And there's a certain um, liking or communing with Lucifer and Satan because of the fact that these people kind of work out of their lower self. Uh, Timothy did state that he's kind of a Luciferian, uh, satanic person himself, meaning he likes all the decadence of life the sex and everything else. So, um, <clears throat> the drugs, the sex, everything else. So, um, so apparently he's been able to do fairly well with many of his writings of books, uh, to live fairly well and decently uh, until recently. Uh, and we, had, we know nothing about it. Here's another person that has uh, passed from the church that really hasn't been pushed. Now, all the interviews I've watched, people are not really going after. It's amazing uh, watching some of the interviews from the new movie um, uh, that they ignore all the gossip about them. And I think that's a very bad thing to do because um, it just looks like a fake front. Now, he... <clears throat> He was asked a few important questions um, when he was interviewed on uh, YouTube, which I will leave the link down below. Uh, but these were never really followed up with strong questions like, you know, what's your connection to David Berkowitz and the Son of Sam? They did talk about his connection to um, uh, Charlie Manson, which uh, he states that they never really officially met him until after he was in prison when they went there and... 
uh, interviewed him for a magazine article. Uh, before that, Manson claims that he sent people over to England to talk with them. He didn't go there himself, and we don't know what that means or even if Manson's telling the truth or not. Manson was very big into Scientology, and he was, uh, from his statement that is online again, it almost looks like he's confusing Scientology, thinking that they turned into this other organization, which was not at that time the Process Church. It was another um different and better technique of Scientology working uh, that they were doing, which failed. Um, they couldn't compete with Scientology, but they took Scientology, changed it for, uh, and they thought they made it better, but they basically took the Scientology system and even their e-meter type uh, things that they had and then put in their own. But that didn't, was not successful. But apparently, um, uh, Manson is a little bit confused thinking that uh, the Scientology church turned into them or uh, this was a variant of it. So he went over, he had some of his people, and you got to remember he had 40, anywhere from 30 to 50 people. He had lots of money from whatever he was into, probably selling drugs and other things. Uh, so he sent people over there to do that. And I'm not sure he could get in and out of the country all that easy anyway, since he had lots of felonies, I believe. Uh, so he sent people over there to talk to them, and we have no idea what happened. I'm assuming, since there was very little to no contact after that, that nothing happened from it. Uh, so uh, Timothy, uh, that's what Timothy uh, Wiley states, that, uh, that he never met Manson or had anything to do with them that he was aware of until they went to prison to talk with him for a magazine article. Apparently, when the church was in San Francisco, um, Manson lived, and of course, you know, he lived all over the place, but while they were there in San Francisco, and they were everywhere, Manson lived um, uh, on the same block. We're not sure how close they were, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's coincidental to a certain degree. It's a big street. He could have, uh, I'm not sure how close he was or not. And um, just because you have a house in a neighborhood, it doesn't know, mean anything uh, unless you know each other. But there was some knowledge of this group if he sent people over to England to talk to them. But, the, but this was pre-processed church. This is when he thought they were an offshoot of Scientology, what they are. But they went through these things. They tried the Scientology route, which Timothy was involved in, and then they moved into this uh, church a, a lot to get tax breaks. They became a church, so they weren't taxed. Because apparently they were making good money. And that's another thing we have to look at. They learned that well from Scientology, that they could charge a lot of money for courses after courses, and they could make a lot of money. Uh, Timothy claims that at one time they made about $2 million a year. And if you're talking about the 70s uh, and 80s here, you're talking what's equivalent maybe to $10 million now, $20 million. <clears throat> That's a lot of money. Where did it go? What's going on? And he hesitated there. I was under the opinion that uh, this was um, a low figure from the way he stated it and didn't talk more about money. And again, that's a big question right now. Where did all the money come to start this big animal rescue that is a nonprofit? They put their expenses right online and they have tens of millions of dollars of income every year and they have sitting in the bank 40 50 million that's a huge amount of money they have sitting there where did all this come from now they are a huge animal group they seem to be able to work uh, the country and the everywhere to get money they work with cities and other things that pay them it's it's very complicated but you know this is the big question what happened it used to be a question of how did they take care of their children they abused well you know that's been kind of ruled out you know again you're getting misinformation and gossip that you know every little statement's a little different than another <clears throat> so we just don't know we don't know what's going on there's talk that they got a lot of their money because uh mary ann was a uh 
involved in prostitution with politicians and everything else and got caught up in those things and may have been blackmailing people or whatever. We just don't know. And apparently she was a dominatrix. We just don't know any of this stuff of whether it's true or not to the bigger picture because none of these people ever got grabbed with everything. Marianne has now died as well. Uh, Timothy is dead. Uh, De Grimston apparently is still alive and should be around 86, which means he ain't going to be alive that much longer. And I don't know why people haven't tracked him down to try and talk with him. Uh, probably he's not very open to do it. The only person who was open to do it was Timothy Wiley, who wrote this book on the Prosep Church from the inside out. I'm assuming he did that because he needed money. And uh, there was an interest there, and he sold the film rights and everything else, apparently, uh, to this other person who produced this uh, movie, which I have not seen yet. So it's quite fascinating of what's going on. After that, he goes into a bunch of New Agey stuff to sell books. And he also has this whole rebel angel thing, uh, which is basically you're talking about the rebel angel would be Lucifer, um, possibly Satan himself, who was thrown out of heaven uh, for being a rebel and kicked out along with Lucifer and a whole bunch of other fallen angels. So he's still into that stint. He's still about that. And that's what he believes. in. of course, that's why he stayed with and got involved with the process church in general. Because as he said, it's this, it's this higher and lower self and you commune with, and at the, uh, it's okay within the organization to commune with your lower self, as long as you balance that somewhat. So that's the big question. So um, we have it at this point, uh, only one member of the process church. Well, there's a few others still alive. I should not say that, but this was, the, he was the most vocal. The two main leaders, one of them is dead Marianne. When we don't know uh, what she died of. People are claiming that she was killed by dogs. Uh, we don't know. It sounds like a fanciful story to me. As I mentioned, he passed away at 77. Uh, there was an interview with him that he talked about the fact that he was a uh, chain smoker all his life. Uh, cigarettes uh, here, and he was constantly smoking, probably what led to his kind of earlier death. You know, you should make it up into your 80s, but he talked about that, and he talked about using uh, his uh, empowerments, his personal psychic empowerments to heal his lungs so he would live longer. So, and maybe he did that because um, 77 ain't too bad. Um, it is still the international average. Most people uh, live into their mid-80s. But it's still pretty good considering all that. So that's what he stated, he, that he was a smoker all his life and he sent healing energies in there to take care of lungs that weren't too good. So I'm assuming that's what he died of. Again, it's amazing how you can't get any um, cause of death on any of these things. You can't find out how people died, etc. There's no information on it. It just amazes me that all these things are kind of looked at and shunned or people just don't know um, uh, what's going on and they, there isn't any legal reporting of it. I guess you could try and get their death certificates of wherever they died and see if that could happen, uh, what was going on there. There's also some talk with the Process Church that there's a problem because uh, a lot of the members of that church, including those that uh, founded the Animal Sanctuary, um, uh, were British, so they think that's harder to get information. But um, Marianne uh, divorced... Uh, de Grimston in 1984 and I believe it wasn't until 1994 that the actual animal sanctuary was founded. By then she was married to Dupree's and we have no information on this guy whatsoever. So as usual those researchers out there if you can call the stooges that are out there researching just about everything but particularly in this area of the process church the son of Sam these are the biggest uneducated stooges I've ever run into. I find nothing but factual errors that are relatively easy to check out that they keep spurting out of themselves, making themselves look like fools, stating things that are completely wrong. And that's all these people that are involved. There's not a single person in the Son of Sam case that I can find that has any credibility, whether they are civilians or police. They all make horrible misstatements that are easily checked. It's just bad. And you have to wonder, what I always wonder is, okay, I know this subject really well, and they made all these obvious errors. 
Now, what other errors did they make? How many other cases? How many other things did they look into that they got wrong? How many people are in prison because they got wrong information? They are uh, demonizing, and particularly in this case, it's appropriate, a whole bunch of people in an entire organization that appears, and I do say appears, to be doing very good work that has an awful lot of support, and they want to continue to foul the waters with them, saying that they are terrible people involved in all sorts of organized crime. That's what they're insinuating, all of these stooge researchers that know absolutely nothing. They make horrible errors that are just, you just scratch your head. Do you know what you're talking about? And all of these people claim to be great researchers. Uh, Maury Terry and all the rest of them, they're not great researchers. He was trying to make money. The rest of the people that followed up there were all very ignorant people. They don't get it. And they were following a person who spewed out disinformation out of every part of his mouth. So it's just really sad. And we don't know. And we don't know what uh, these people were ultimately into. They don't seem like the type that... And where did everybody go? None of these people were linked to any crimes. Timothy Wiley was never questioned by anybody that I know of. They were never arrested. They were never questioned. Uh, yet everybody thinks that they were involved in all these horrible killings because the nut job, the psychopath, David Berkowitz, stated so. Well, I think there is an organized crime. Of course, I know there's an organized uh, crime is heavily involved in satanic practices. But the bottom line is, is that um, I f it doesn't appear to have any connection to the process church in the bigger picture. A, yeah, there's a lot of coincidences. They're here, they're there. Yeah, well, they were everywhere and they were big mouths. Where's the beef people? Where's the charges against them? Where have they linked Marianne, Robert, or even Timothy Wiley? None of these people have been linked to anything. Not a single statement and not a single arrest. These people have been doing nothing. Now, the, uh, if you want to like or dislike their philosophy, well, that's totally up to you. And, you know, I have problems with people who are constantly taking hallucinogens and thinking that they're tapping into another world when they're just really tapping into their own belief systems that they now made into goofy pictures. Because it only helps to a certain degree. In the end, your belief system is your belief. So what he saw and the information that Timothy Wiley brought back from his drug uh, taking was things that fit into his reality. He didn't learn anything new, hardly. Uh, they just fit into what he believed to begin with. And he keeps reaffirming that with every new trip he takes. I hope that's helped. Until next time.